Your portfolio is a crucial indicator into how profitable your 3D rendering business can be. And there's a few steps you can take in order to optimize it correctly. But make sure you watch the video all the way through the end because skipping just one of these steps can be detrimental to your 3D rendering business. The first step is defining your target audience. And I think this is crucial because you want your portfolio to reflect your client's work. I think that a few filters that you want to take a look at when targeting your clients are what industry they're in. And in my opinion, there's not one best demographic. Whichever demographic your services serve best in terms of solving their problems, I think that is the one that you should go with. Another category that you should define, I think, is the type of services that you want to cover. So there's plenty of them like 3D rendering, 3D walkthroughs, animations, 360 tours, and also virtual reality experiences. Now, if you get a client for 3D rendering and they ask for animation, I'm not saying that you should decline the offer immediately, but all I'm saying is that the more specific you position yourself in your portfolio, the more you can position yourself as an expert in that field. And obviously this can take you one step forward when comparing you to the other competition. I think when optimizing your portfolio, you should only show your best work. And in this instance, I believe that quality goes over quantity. And I know that most of you have at least one or two projects that you're not super proud of in your portfolio. But in my opinion, eight to 10 projects work perfectly fine and you don't really need to go over that. But if you choose to go over that, and let's say you have different types of projects in different type of niches, I think it's very important to categorize your work. So for example, you can have categories like residential work, uh, commercial buildings, or even like categories for the types of services you do. As we said, 360 tours, images, walkthroughs, and all like that. And that just makes the whole user experience of the potential customers on your portfolio much easier because they can find whatever they're looking for right away. So where do you actually showcase your portfolio? Well, there are a few free online sources where you can put your work. Uh, some of them you might know like RStation or Behance and they can all work well. Personally, if you can afford right now to build a website, please do so because I think it's much better. You can have it personalized and not only that, but I think the biggest differentiator in this one is that you kind of have the potential client isolated to only your website. And obviously I know that they can go to different tabs and search for other freelancers and all that. But for example, if they're on Behance, they can immediately find someone else who is suggested through the platform and they they can compare your work with other stuff and that way you just kind of have a bit more competition so just overall my suggestion would be to open your own website and it doesn't have to be anything super complicated with animation and stuff like that you can do that with a drag and drop tool there's plenty of them out there that you can use which are not super expensive i'm not sponsored by any of them but some of them might be squarespace webflow wix or any other similar website builder now another tip that i have for you that i see not many people utilize correctly is actually including testimonials and case studies in your portfolio in my opinion testimonials if done correctly they can have a huge impact on whether someone trusts you or not now i know that the world today is filled with fake testimonials but one thing that i believe makes a huge difference here is if you can actually get video testimonials from your clients now this is a game changer and believe me as soon as i started to implement that in my own business it skyrocketed a lot of the conversion rates between my meetings. And that's just because if someone is sharing your experience with you, and obviously if it seems genuine, which you should aim for that, it will let your prospects take a step with much less risk into collaborating with you. And also for this, I believe having a good communication with your potential clients is very crucial because if everything is going smoothly when you're working with them, it's not gonna be that hard to ask for a favor. And you can even ask them to do it in return for a small discount on the next project or even like that. If you want to feel more confident in them not being hesitant to do the video testimonial for you but other than that i think that even written testimonials can work well if you know how to input them correctly and if they do sound genuine now also when creating case studies make sure that you outline very specifically what the client's goals were what their challenges before working with you were and how you were able to solve their problems now with this people can resonate more and they can feel a bit more relatable with the starting point that they are right now and where the starting point was for the client that you had. And this will immediately seem as the right step to use your services 
to get from that point, so point A to the point B, which is their desired result. Before I get on to the next tip, which is something that has helped me massively to get new clients, make sure to click the first link in the description to join a program where I will join a live video call with you, where I will help you get your 3D running business to six figures in just six weeks. Now, another thing that can increase trust massively to your potential customers is actually putting the behind the scenes of your work or kind of the process of how you're able to achieve your results. Now, this can happen in many different formats and it doesn't have to only be video tutorials like I do, but it can also be written format in terms of blog if you're better at that than video. And it can also be just screenshot images throughout the process of your other projects. And you can just type a description of what went through your head when you were doing that process or what went through your head when you were doing that project. However, if you're comfortable in front of the camera, I think video works the best with this type of stuff. It can definitely be a game changer to whether the clients choose you or someone who just posts the final results and doesn't explain and doesn't have actual proof that they did it themselves. Because in today's day and age, there's a lot of drop servicing happen and clients know about this. I mean, they're not dumb and they want their work to be completed by the person that they're paying. So keep that in mind, this is a huge advantage if you can do that when compared to other competitors you have out there. Now, having a good portfolio, but having no marketing skills will still get you zero clients. If you want to learn a strategy for $10,000 per month for 3D rendering business, make sure to watch the video right here.